Oftentimes, association football can be a family affair. Just take Italian football as one example, where you have father and son duo Cesar Maldini and Paolo Maldini, both AC Milan legends. Meanwhile, Cesar's grandson and Paolo's son Daniel is now playing first team football for AC Milan, whilst his brother Christian plays in Italy's lower leagues. Then there's brothers Franco and Giuseppe Baresi, who ended up becoming great rivals at club level with Inter and AC Milan, but teammates on the international stage. And finally, the pick of the bunch, Italian football's finest footballing dynasty, the Mazzola family. Father Valentino was one of the finest midfielders on earth when he died in the Superga air disaster, aged only 30, meanwhile his son Sandro would continue the family legacy, becoming a world-class midfielder in his own right, and his brother Ferruccio even racked up a fair number of appearances for Lazio. Those are just three examples from one country, but my task today, set by subscriber Orlando, was to find seven footballing brothers who represented different national teams. Now, when I first saw that video idea, there were only maybe four or five that I could think of immediately, and I was thinking it might be quite a tough one to put together. Well, as is so often the case, I was wrong. There are absolutely loads. I stopped when I got to a shortlist of 20, and it wouldn't surprise me if there were another 20 out there. So there'll be no Jerome and Kevin Prince Boateng and none of the Pogba brothers. Given the plethora of options, I've tried to pick out seven of the most interesting examples, so my sincere apologies to all of the brothers out there who miss out. Here are seven brothers who represent or represented different national teams. João Mario and Wilson Eduardo. I had to include this one, seeing as though it was what prompted Orlando to suggest this video idea in the comment section on my video about a what-if Angola national team if all eligible players had declared for them. I must admit that before making that video, I was unaware that João Mario and Wilson Eduardo were brothers in the first place, perhaps due to the fact that they don't have the same surname, which tends to be a dead giveaway. Both were enormously talented youth team players who starred for Portugal at multiple underage levels and earned rave reviews in the sporting club de Portugal Academy. Born in Portugal but of Angolan descent, both players had their hearts set on representing Portugal. Eduardo scored 26 goals from 61 appearances for Portugal at a number of different youth levels, from the under-16s to the under-21s, but a senior call-up was never forthcoming. He turned down a call-up from Angola in 2013, aged 23, but six years later he reversed his decision and accepted a call-up ahead of Angola's 2019 African Cup of Nations qualifiers. He has since scored two goals from six caps for the national team, ranked 124th in the world. And he recently turned his back on Portugal at club level as well, signing a two-year deal with Al Ain in the UAE Pro League. João Mario did receive a senior call-up from Portugal following his glittering youth team career, and the 27-year-old has since won 45 caps for the still reigning European champions. Whilst his brother recently left Portugal's Primeira Liga, Mario just returned, agreeing a one-year loan deal back at Sporting. Christian and Max Vieri Former world-class marksman and close friend of mine Christian Vieri, and by close friend I mean I shouted, are you going to sign Fall City at him at a trade show in Barcelona when I was 12 years old, is perhaps the most underappreciated and underrated centre-forward of the late 1990s and early 2000s, and I don't just say that because we're such good mates. A man who averaged close to a goal a game at his peak, Vieri was quick, powerful, lethal in front of goal, and possessed much better technical skills than he was often credited with. Nicknamed the Bull, Vieri was rather bullish in his play, and sadly that led to him picking up repeated injuries, which halted, derailed, and ultimately ended his playing days. Nonetheless, at his best, he was among the best in the business, and the Bologna-born Italian legend bagged 23 goals in 49 games for the Azzurri between 1997 and 2005, in addition to 11 goals from 22 games for Italy's under-21s prior to that. Christian Vieri was the son of Roberto Vieri, who played for Bologna when Christian was born, hence why he was born there. By the time the Vieris had their second child, Father Roberto was winding down his career in Australia with the Marconi Stallions in Sydney though. So that is where Christian's brother Max was born. Max Vieri moved to Italy with his family in 1996, but having failed to score prolifically in Serie A, he was never going to get a call-up from the Italian squad. In 2004, Max accepted a call-up from Australia, but he only played six games and failed to find the back of the net for the Socceroos. Arland and Albianietti. I don't know how many Celtic fans subscribe to this channel, but this one is for those of you that do. Having scored prolifically for Basel in Switzerland, Albianietti joined West Ham for £8 million in 2019. The Premier League can be a cruel mistress at times though, and following no goals in nine games, a Yeti was offloaded to Celtic for a little over half of what the Hammers had cost him in the summer. 
Since arriving in the Scottish Premiership, Ayeti has scored five goals in six league games, suggesting that he could prove to be something of a bargain for the Glasgow outfit, who have done well with signing strikers from south of the border in the past. Albion was born in Basel, he represented Switzerland at six different youth levels, and he has won 10 caps for the Swiss senior side since 2018. His older brother Arland, on the other hand, who plays for Ajana in Serie B as a centre-back these days, was also born in Basel, also represented Switzerland, and multiple different youth levels, but now plays his senior international football for Albania. The brother's father, Afram Ayeti, was also a footballer who fled Kosovo for Switzerland with his family due to war in the 1990s. Whilst they were raised in Switzerland, the brothers have proud Kosovo Albanian heritage, and Arlen decided that he wanted to represent Albania following the controversial Euro 2016 qualifier between Albania and Serbia. He has since won 18 caps for Albania, and Albania didn't concede a single goal whilst he was on the pitch at Euro 2016. There is also a third Yeti brother, Adonis, who was also born in Basel and has represented Switzerland at multiple youth levels, but the 23-year-old St. Gallen centre-back is yet to win a senior cap for any national team. Granite and Tauland Jacker Probably the most high-profile brothers in this seven, Tauland Jacker, has only ever played in Switzerland, so I suspect there are a good number of people who don't know much about him, and therefore I felt this one was still worthy of inclusion. Granit Xhaka will of course be the most familiar of the duo with our subscribers, having spent the last four years at Arsenal and previously having starred in the Bundesliga for Borussia Mönchengladbach. Both Granit and Tauland are the sons of Rajib Xhaka, who was born in Bessiana, whilst it was part of Yugoslavia, which is now part of the disputed territory of Kosovo. Rajib was a political prisoner who was arrested during his time at university aged only 22 before relocating to Basel, where he had his two sons. Both Granit and Tauland Xhaka came through the Basel and Switzerland youth ranks, but whilst Granit has since left Basel behind, Tauland has since left Switzerland behind. Granit is one of Switzerland's star players, already capped 84 times at the age of 28. Meanwhile, Tauland won his first senior caps for Albania in 2014, and has since won 31 caps for the country in which he has never lived. The two brothers also have two cousins, Armando Seduku, who represents Albania, and Argon Xhaka, who is as yet uncapped, but may yet represent Kosovo, meaning the cousins as a whole could have represented three different nations. John and Archie Goodall I might have some image problems with this one, in fact I might have some image problems with a few players in this seven, you'll have to forgive me, I record these videos before I try to source images, but nonetheless, there was no way in which I was leaving out John and Archie Goodall. Football's first brothers to represent different national teams, John Goodall represented England, whilst Archie Goodall played for Ireland back when the Island of Ireland had a unified national team. John Goodall was one of the first real superstars of the Football League, winning the Golden Boot in the Football League's debut 1888-89 campaign whilst playing for a Preston North End side that went unbeaten in both the league and the FA Cup throughout the entire season. Goodall was born in London and enjoyed a brilliant career with the likes of Preston, Derby and Watford, as well as enjoying a brief stint playing in France. John scored 12 goals from 14 caps for England between 1888 and 1898, including a brace against Ireland in a 9-0 win at the age of 31. Unfortunately, John never got the chance to play against his brother Archie at international level. Archie Goodall was born in Belfast and he spent 14 years playing for Derby County, 11 of which came alongside John. Two years John's junior, Archie had to wait until an Irish FA rule change in 1899 before earning his first call-up to the national team, which restricted him to just 10 caps. Steve and Parfait Mandanda The Mandanda family have pretty remarkable goalkeeping pedigree. Steve Mandanda, who is the oldest and best known member of the family, has three younger brothers, all of whom are professional goalkeepers. Steve is obviously a full French international who plays for Marseille, Parfait Mandanda is currently on loan with Hartford Athletic in the United States and represents DR Congo at international level, and then there's Rafifi and Over Mandanda, neither of whom have received senior international caps, although Rafifi did represent both France and DR Congo at youth level. Steve is the only one of the brothers who wasn't born in France, having been born in Kinshasa, capital of Zaire at the time, now the capital of DR Congo. Perhaps it's somewhat ironic then that he is the only one who should play for France, although naturally that is also to do with the fact that he is by far the most accomplished of the quartet, and opportunities in the France squad are hard to come by. Aged 35, Steve has won 33 caps for France, spending most of his 12 years as an international, serving as backup to Hugo Lloris. Parfait Mandanda, who is four years younger, made one appearance for France's under-21s back in 2007. 
Best known for his time at Belgian outfit Charleroi, who he joined in 2011 and is technically still contracted to, Parfait accepted a call-up from DR Congo in 2008. He has won 17 caps since then for the nation of his parents, with whom he finished third at the 2015 African Cup of Nations. Florence and Leslie Malouda Bear with me here, because I don't want to scramble your brains too much, but you could make a case that Florent Malouda and Leslie Malouda have represented different national teams, that they have represented the same national team, that the caps one of them won for one national team don't count, and even that one of them has never actually represented any national team at all. Okay, I should probably take a few steps back at this point, and explain that both Florent and Leslie Malouda were born in the French overseas territory of French Guyana in South America. Florence was born in the nation's capital of Cayenne, whilst Leslie was born 40 miles up the coast in Kourou. Both players made early moves to mainland France, but Florence enjoyed a great deal more success than Leslie. A brilliant left winger, who I thought was oftentimes underrated during his time in the Premier League, Florence is best remembered for his time with Lyon and Chelsea, and the 84 caps that he won for France, which give you some indication of his talents. Leslie enjoyed a less glittering career, with his only league unexposure coming in the form of eight games for Lens. Leslie made his only international appearance for French Guyana in 2012 in an unofficial fixture, hence why it could be claimed he never represented the nation at all. Florent, meanwhile, accepted a call from French Guyana in 2017, five years after his last cap for France. French Guyana aren't full FIFA members, hence why Florent could be called up after winning 84 caps for France, but when French Guyana played him in a game at the CONCACAF Gold Cup, a tournament which does align with FIFA regulations, they were forced to forfeit the game, hence the convoluted preamble that I made at the start of this section. So that's it for today's video. Thank you all as ever for watching, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts as ever in the comments, and also feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for the one and only HITC7s. Oh, and you can also follow me on social media, there's Twitter and Instagram, the username is just at HITC7s on both.